Thank you to Kenzie Bruce for his incredibly generous support on Patreon. Toski Bearer of Secrets versus Joyry N. Ruin Diver. And I'm definitely going to keep that one because we've got mana, we've got dorks. A means of making more creatures with Joriel. And we're on the play here, so we should be able to get good advantage over our opponent. So we'll just start things off with the Lanoir Elves and pass the turn straight over. And it's an Urza's Bauble from our opponent. They get to draw a card with that and look at a random card in our hand. Reliquary Tower allows us to keep up our mana. Uh, so let's just go for the Mana Dork first of all. And then we'll have Jorriel in play, ready for when our commander is in play. Uh, we'll probably get that down next turn and swing in with both of these. Assuming that they don't have a blocker. And then we show them Reliquary Tower. We'll be playing that next turn, so not too worried about that. Playing in a land tapped, Kazul's Cliffs. So I might see their commander next turn. Juraga Tree Speaker, another Mana Dork. Let's just... Begin to draw cards with our Toski. That comes down pretty quickly, so we'll just swing in with these two, draw a couple of cards, we'll go up to five in hand. And they're doing something in response. Okay, Shadow Rift. And they're just doing that to draw a card, giving our Toski Shadow. Doesn't do anything, I thought that would be an unsummon effect. But we'll still draw the cards here, they go up to seven in hand. And we get a land for next turn. Make a token, a cat token. And another land. Brainstorm from our opponent. I assume that they're struggling to get into lands. Which is why they're brainstorming there. And managing to get themselves into a polluted delta. So putting some stuff on top that they don't care about and shuffling it away. <laughs> and then they had a mana crypt so they could still get down their commander here. Instead going for trinket mage so... They will be able to ramp ahead of us here if they want to. Yep, going for Sol Ring as Trinket Mage tends to. But instead that is Flame Slash onto the Jolriel. Alright, Beastmaster Ascension. Play the Forest. And if we play this this turn, we'll have... Uh, that makes four, so that's five creatures in total. We'll definitely have other creatures to swing in with. I'm thinking we go Deranged Hermit this turn. So we'll just go in with the Toski and the Cat, and they probably just chump block the Toski. I think that's a 1-1, one, one, isn't it? Yep, a 1-1 one, one indestructible Toski, not worried about losing that. So they do chump block there. We'll draw a card from the Cat and get into our own Sol Ring, that's really good, so that means we can do more this turn. Uh, we'll go for Juraga Tree Speaker. A little bit greedy, actually. Maybe should have held up the Heroic Intervention. Yeah, probably should have done that, actually. But let's go for the Deranged Hermit. Just try and go full aggro on our opponent. Definitely should have held up Heroic Intervention here because they might have Pyroclasm or some form of wiping the board in red. But instead, going for their commander. So I'm assuming they don't have a board wipe in hand. Playing the Sol Ring that they just tutored. And then they went for Repeal. Return a non-land permanent with CMC X to its owner's hand. Uh, so just bouncing a squirrel there, basically. We can still trigger the Beastmaster Ascension, so not all that worried about that. Um, do we want to pay for Hermit Druid? We'll have three, four, five, six, and seven still, so no, we don't need to worry about that. Bellowing Tangle Worm is good to give all of our stuff some form of evasion. They won't be able to block any of our stuff. Unless they get into a colourless artifact. But I think we definitely want Beastmaster Ascension here. Yep, and our opponent scoops to that. Um, I think we get them here anyway. We'll have plus 5, plus 5 on all of our stuff. So that is 6, 12 and 18 on the squirrels alone. We would have had, obviously the lands held up, would have held back a Lanawar Elves as well. And that would have allowed us to maybe... No, we probably just hold down Heroic Intervention, so... Yeah, swing in with everything there, hold up Heroic Intervention, and probably level up the Jiraga Tree Speaker, just for the sake of not doing it later on. But yeah, that was a pretty convincing one for us, so I think we should try one more. 
Toski bearer of secrets and it's only a matter of time before Golos Tireless Pilgrim shows up. I was hoping it would take longer than <laughs> the second game though. Uh, we've got another good hand so we'll keep that one. We're on the play again so let's get down our mana dork. It is an Oath of Nyssa for our opponent so uh, <laughs> they get Field of the Dead. Of course they do. I mean they're a few turns away from Field of the Dead at least but good to know it's on the way. Heraldic Banner. Uh, instead of the Emerald Medallion, I might go for that then. Because we can get down the Treetop Scout as well. So Heraldic Banner. We name green, of course, and then that will give all of our green creatures plus one to their power. As well as tap for green mana. Then a Felwar Stone from the Wooberg player. So they've still got only two colours available to them, because the Felwar Stone taps for green. Extra Planar Lens. This is why I run the Snow Forests. It might be they still have Snow Forests in the deck because they've got Field of the Dead. And Field players tend to mix the basics up. Yeah, I might play the Mana Doubler here. Uh, actually, I think we want Toski, don't we? Then we can keep filling up our hand. So yeah, let's drop the Toski down. We'll get Emerald Medallion into play first, actually. Means we draw one less card from the Elvish Mystic, but... It also means that we save a lot of mana with Emerald Medallion ramping every turn so far. Then we'll draw a card with the Treetop Scout and hopefully we'll draw a lot more next turn. Hi <laughs> guys Cradle, yep, can't really complain with these draws. They just play in their field tapped. So I don't know if that means that they didn't have access to another land or if they're just trying to get that out of the way while they've got nothing else to do. A forest for us. Uh, let's see what we draw into before anything else. Have to swing in with Toski every turn, and we'll go in with our Mana Dork as well, seeing as how we're going to get a lot of mana with Gaia's Cradle. A Sakura Tribe Elder, Song of the Dryads, is really good for when Golos comes in. We'll drop the Gaia's Cradle, and we'll go extra plain our lens here. Get rid of the tap land. And then it is Soul of the Harvest, which only costs 5 mana thanks to the Emerald Medallion from last turn. Might as well get down Sakura Tribe Elder to draw a card. And we'll obviously ramp a little bit as well. Champion of Lamholt pretty much seals it as long as we can keep making creatures. Making a third colour in the mountain. Golos Tireless Pilgrim comes down. They're not going to be triggering field for a while yet. And they're not going to be able to block with this Golos thanks to the Song of the Dryads. <laughs> Alright, fair enough, scooping there. Uh, Song of the Dryads wouldn't have added to their Field of the Dead count either, because it would have just been another forest, so... What we do there is Song of the Dryads on the Golos. We were just getting into another forest next turn. Uh, I don't think we had them next turn, but... Yeah, so drawing into a Seeker's Chariot when playing the Champion of Lamholt, maybe, and... Yeah, we didn't have haste or anything, so... I think the writing might have been on the wall there, but our opponent may well have gotten into a board wipe, so obviously I don't know what's in their deck. We'll try one more because that was an early scoop and it wasn't very satisfying, was it? Okay, let's try again, this time up against Marite of the Frost. And we've got a turn one Mystic Elf again. Uh, so that will be a turn two Toski if we want it. Yeah, I think we'll keep that. We are on the play yet again, so we'll go for the Elvish Mystic, like I said. And it's a turn one Sol Ring from our opponent. They still need double blue for their commander. We've got Druid's Call. Uh, let's just go for the Toski, and we'll put maybe Swiftfoot Boots and Druid's Call out next turn. Well, there's the one island they needed. And Song of the Dryads onto our Toski, so now we need some removal for that. That'll slow us down nicely. Okay, Skull Clamp ought to help us there. Uh, we'll get down the Nykthos. And maybe it's just the Predator Ooze to help us with Devotion for the Nykthos. And then we might as well get down the Swiftfoot Boots here. So we'll start to get a big Predator Ooze here at least. That gets a plus one plus one counter every time it attacks. And whenever a creature dealt damage by it dies, you put a plus counter on it as well. Now a Realm Waker. So I don't know if this is Changeling Tribal or if they're going for something, uh, some kind of specific tribe. Can't remember if I remember to add this to my 
Lathril elf deck or not. Alright, that's interesting. Naming Kraken with that, so might be a Simic Kraken deck. And there's the double blue that they need for their commander. Might see that next turn. Yeah, maybe they're running the new Kraken that I can't remember the name of. It makes a Serpent token every upkeep. Maybe that's what their plan is. Alright, a forest is fine. Let's go for Wood Elves. And that allows us to get into a forest. We'll go for green and green, and that can be Druid's Call. Don't think they're going to block the Predatorius anyway, but if they do, we're going to get a lot of Squirrel Tokens, potentially. Uh, so we've got decent devotion to green now, so I might just go Skull Clamp on the Wood Elves and see what we draw into next turn. Or um, after combat even, not next turn. Swing in with the Predatorius, get another plus counter. And then we'll make a bunch of green mana. And go for the Skull Clamp. See if they've got some counter magic. They do not. So we'll go Wood Elves being equipped with the Skull Clamp. Which obviously draws us two cards. Alright, Mana Crypt. Just get all of this out straight away. Uh, let's... Yeah, we've got plenty of mana, so let's go Elvish Mystic being clamped as well. We need to get into an answer for this Song of the Dryads, really. Okay, Utopia Sprawl can go on a forest. And let's just go for Heraldic Banner. Name green with that. And we might as well, with the floating mana, put the Skull Clamp onto the Indestructible. Because it just adds a power to it. That is now a 5-2, I think. 5-2 with Hexproof, Haste and Indestructible. So we'll see if we can win this one with the Predator Ooze. And a lack of Tosky. Puts our opponent in an even trickier spot, actually. If they block the Predator Ooze, which they'll be forced to do eventually, then it'll give us some Squirrels. And if they give us Squirrels, then we've got the Skull Clamp to kill them off and draw cards. So, yeah, they are in a tricky spot here. That is Bloodline Pretender, naming Kraken again. Whenever another creature of the chosen type enters under your control, put a plus counter on it. Might just be that they've got like the huge bounce spells, the big bounce creatures at the top end. And uh, there are certain big creatures that care about Krakens and sea monsters in general, so they might just be playing around that. Swinging in with the 2-3, they can hit us with that, no problem. Let's see if we get bolted. We do not get bolted. And that is a Guardian Project. Uh, let's see if they want to block here. I highly doubt it. We've got them on a decent clock now, though. Six power going in. Takes them down to 19. And we'll go for that Guardian Project. I'll just hold on to the forest here, just in case they worry about, I don't know, heroic intervention or some kind of artifact removal. Now the Marite of the Frost coming into play. Can come down as a copy of any of their permanents. And they make it a copy of the Realm Waker. Um, yeah, I don't think that does anything for them, really. Yeah, because they've named Kraken on that as well. Might have been a better idea to do it with this, because that is an anthem. But anyway, that comes down with some plus counters on it, and it triggers the Bloodline Pretender. So swinging in at us, they have no intention of blocking, so we might have to start holding up the Predator Ooze, especially if we start getting bolted by Mana Crypt. Managing to win the flip there as well, though. Okay, uh, Jolriel. They can do nine to us next turn. Maybe more if they have a Kraken come in. Yeah, if they have a bunch of Krakens come in from the Realm Waker, then they could buff this even further, but I think we just have to try and land as much damage as possible. And at least if we are encouraging them to keep turning sideways, then it means that we can keep getting through, potentially. Not throwing their commander away, unsurprisingly. So we'll get down the Jol Royale. And that draws us a card with Guardian Project, so that will trigger the Jol Royale and give us a cat token. Um, I think if they've got removal, they'll put it on the Jol Royale. But I think I'm more likely to throw the cat away. Oh, alright, and our opponent scoops to that. That's surprising, so they must have nothing in hand or have 
not much faith that they're actually going to draw into something. Um, yeah, I think I would have plumped for putting the Skull Clamp on the token there. If they've got removal in Pongify or something, they'd definitely point it here, but... Well, clearly they didn't have anything, and we had protection with Heroic Intervention for that anyway. Uh, so yeah, that wasn't looking very good for us. I don't know if we were going to draw into any enchantment removal. Doesn't look like it. So yeah, just managing to get around everything with the Predator Ooze, luckily. Hopefully you all enjoyed these games. Toski is a really fun one to play, so I do hope you all enjoyed it. I'm Travel Kai on the EDH channel. Thank you for watching.